Oh my God, that's gorgeous. Last Saturday, I went to visit my friend Chris in Louisiana. I went there to help paint some furniture that she really wanted to get done. And that's gonna be a different video, but I am gonna share some of my time that I spent with her. And of course, I have to do a little thrifting. And you should not be afraid of picking up stuff when it is out of season. At $1.99, I'm going to have to get these. I need to get a In one day, we hit up about seven stores, and I spent more money than I would care to admit to. But we did have a good time. And today, I'm going to make over some of the thrift pieces that I found. I'm also going to show you how I overcame my issue that I couldn't resolve last weekend on making a heart-shaped coffee filter wreath. Last week, it was a huge fail. The wreath itself came out nice once I turned it into a circle, but I couldn't make the heart work. This week, I got it figured out. Wait, say that again? <laughs> and I'll just move in with you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know you'll take me. I know I will. <laughs> This little clock is one of the pieces that I bought. Overall, it was a good shape, except for a couple little missing broken pieces at the top. Once I pan it, those won't even be noticeable. I paid $6.99, which probably was a little bit too much, especially given that it did have some broken edges, but I think I will still be able to make decent money on it. So I'm gonna start painting it. I gave it a good wipe down with a baby wipe, and then I am painting it with a Dixie Belle, and today I'm using the color Drop Cloth. Dixie Bell is very easy to use. If you've never used it, you literally just give it a little shake to make sure it's well combined and then um, dip your brush in and start painting. After two coats, I let everything dry and then I'm gonna use my DIY Golden Rule Gilding Wax and just sort of give it a little once over. I'm not gonna distress this at all. I want it to look very French country, maybe a little Baroque. Uh, I don't know if you know, but gold is back in a big way and I wanted to give this a little bit of that beautiful French sheen. Um, I, I, I love how this came out and we'll let you see here in a second. This is such an easy, fast, and um, very achievable makeover for any thrifted piece. There's virtually nothing to it. Finished projects and all our DIY supplies will be available at vintagebedesign.com. Did I mention that gold is going to be big this year? Not only gold, but French, French, and a little more French. French country being one of my favorite styles. I am so excited with Prima's first quarter release. I can barely stand it. We are fully stocked and have all of these ready to ship to you right now. They launched last week while I was gone, and I'm so excited to share them with you. And I'm featuring a few of these in today's projects as well. So I hope that you love these as much as I do. And like I said, you can pick them all up at vintagebedesign.com. These are gonna sell really fast because we know that Prima's classic vintage labels are typically our best selling transfer. So with five new vintage label packs, all under $20, they're gonna be huge. I actually got to try out the Renata stencil on Chris's furniture when I was painting it for her, but that's a different video. I'm gonna batch paint these um, red bottles that I picked up thrifting and I don't remember how much I paid but they were very inexpensive I do remember that and my initial thought had been I would show the red when you you know so that you could kind of see it from underneath for Valentine's Day but then I decided that I didn't really like that look so I started painting it with Dixie Belle's Slick Stick, which is the best product to use on glass in my opinion. And then I base painted it with DIY's Crinoline, added a top coat, I used DIY's Liquid Patina, and now I'm gonna be using one of the new vintage labels with, by Redesign with Prima. These are some of the new packs, and again, they're just fantastic. You get three sheets of transfers in each pack. They're so easy to use. They these are going to be, if you are a retailer who flips in a booth or you sell your products online, I'm going to tell you these are some of the best money you can spend on transfers. And anything with transfers, especially these French labels, sells really quickly. 
I just can't believe how cute these little jars came out. And I'm glad I made the decision to go ahead and paint the top so you couldn't see the red inside. I love these new blue vintage labels. There's a dark blue also. Let me know in the comments what you think about them. And get your excited face on because Creative Con is back. We're going to be holding it here in Jacksonville, Florida. You can go to vintagebedesign.com and click on the link that under business skills and you can get your tickets. We have online classes available. We have in-person and we have payment plans for the in-person as well. We have limited tickets. This is a fun event. So go book now. You don't want to miss out. Almost any time I can find vintage silver, tarnished silver in a thrift store inexpensively, I pick it up because when I paint it, it absolutely sells. Today I'm using Dixie Belle's Silk Mineral Paint, which is an all-in-one, meaning that it has a primer and top coat as well as the paint uh, built into it so you don't have to top coat afterwards. But I'm going to be adding transfers, so I will end up top coating anyway. But I like doing this because typically after you use chalk paint, before you add transfers, you should seal it. So this still removes one of those steps for me. This dries fast and it really does give you a nice surface. Unlike Fusion Mineral Paint, which is also an all-in-one, I don't seem to have any problems distressing my pieces, which is one of my least favorite things about Fusion. Although I love the paint for many products, um, Fusion is not my favorite for distressing. So here again, I have a couple of the new Redesign with Prima transfer sets. These are the middies. These are priced at $19.95. You get three sheets. They're all fantastic. And I'm going to start layering my transfers. And I'm going to leave a lot of this in here because people often ask about the way that I layer transfers and how I do this. So I really want you to be able to see sort of my process. Of course, I'm going to eliminate a lot of the, you know, just using the stick to make it work and stick to the surface. But I do want you to see kind of my thought process as I layer. So I had that large piece kind of a little bit above center, and now I want to layer some flowers going over the edge. And I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. And with that curved surface, I just want to sort of gently nudge the, the round areas, and then I will do sort of the areas above that last. Layering transfers is easy. A lot of people are afraid that the transfers won't stick or somehow they'll make the bottom one pull off. They stick very nicely to each other. So layering is a great option. You can see in the very lightest parts a little bit through it so you can see some of that print below it, but I'm okay with that. Overall, I love when they overlap each other more than when they are just distance. I think that's what actually makes it look more like it's one big piece and a little more custom other than, you know, just adding stickers. Now, I had originally planned on using the other half of that sheet, but I didn't like the size. And this one was a little bit smaller and would fill up the bottom space nicely while still leaving that rim that I'm going to distress. And then I'm going to add some um, more of the DIYs golden rule. So layering is super easy. Don't be afraid to overlap your transfers. To me, again, that's part of what makes this feel like a more solid and custom piece. When you are done with your transfers, you should seal everything. And of course, I figured out after I painted the base that the bottom actually came off and it would be a lot easier to seal that way. Now you'll see that I didn't catch the whole thing when I base painted it because I couldn't get in those smaller areas and now I can, but I'm gonna sand some of it back so I was fine with exactly how that was. I am using Dixie Belle's Clear Coat Satin Finish and I'm going to do two coats. While I didn't really need to seal the base because I didn't do anything to it to ruin the all-in-one uh, all finish that it already had, I wanted the finish being a satin coat to match the top. So that's why I sealed that. And again, I did two coats on the top and the bottom. And obviously this tray is gonna be meant for decorative purposes, not necessarily for food. After I've done all of that, I'm gonna use DIY Paints Golden Rule again. I love this gilding wax. Um, and you'll see, I just add it with my hands, my fingertips along the rim after I've done a light distress, and then I'm going to use a brush and start stroking it into the middle. And 
Yeah, I guess I went a little more than I thought, but I just kept adding it until I really liked the way that it came out. And I just love all the shimmer. I don't know, maybe Kasha's uh, sort of creeping in on me, but I love all the gold accents that I put on here that aren't naturally part of the transfer. And the nice thing is because this is a gilding wax, you do not need to seal over the golden rule. It, is, it will harden when it completely dries and it will be just as durable as the top coat itself. So what do you think? Did I add too much? Should I have edited or did I add just the right amount touch of gold? While I did style this to be a little more romantic for Valentine's Day, I feel like this French country look could really go year round. What do you think? Do you love the way it came out? Is it too pink? I don't know, uh, too gold? I love it. And here's a quick reminder that you can follow us on all social media at Vintage Bee Design. And we have a community in Facebook called Creating the Hive or Creative Con Vintage Bee. And I have just started this month a new coaching group. Membership is only $20 a month. There's lots of discounts. Links in the description below. Let's get back to crafting. Last week, I showed you how to make a coffee filter wreath. And today, I'm going to show you how to do it in a couple of different ways. I'm going to start today, though, by dyeing my coffee filters. So I am using some of Dixie Belle Paint Peony and mixing it in with water. And what I did figure out is if you want a darker color, you can do a couple different things. You can use the natural coffee filters instead, and I'll show you what the difference looks like there. You can add more paint, or you can use a different color paint, and all of those will adjust the color for you. I've seen this done with food coloring and alcohol ink also. I wanted something a little bit more opaque and I wanted it to have a little bit more variety to it, which is why I went with paint. And of course, all of these different options um, will give you different results. So give them a try and let me know which ones you've tried and which ones you like best. So I'm basically soaking an entire little stack of coffee filters into the water and then I'm wringing them out. Also, I did notice if I didn't wring them out as much, if I left more of the moisture in there, naturally that would have more of the pigment. And as the water evaporated, more pigment would stay. So another way that you could make the coffee filters darker is to not wring them out as much. Of course, you'll go through a lot more paint and a lot more water that way. The videos that I had seen on YouTube recommended putting these um, on your cookie sheet and then cooking them in your oven at 300 degrees for about an hour. This must be for a much lower quantity of coffee filters than I did. While I found this method was working, it certainly was taking a lot longer than an hour, and I had a lot of coffee filters I wanted to get through. Now I have a convection range, so I can put multiple cookie sheets, but after a while I realized maybe the dryer would be a better option. And let me tell you, that it definitely was. I just put this on more dry and I came back a few, maybe 30 minutes later. And yeah, you know exactly what's gonna happen. You can feel it, right? A cascade of pink coffee filters came out. Yep. Now, because I had let them dry a little bit in the oven first, I didn't have any pink paint residue in my dryer at all. When I recreated this, with more coffee filters, with more paint on them, with a deeper saturation, I did have a little bit of pink paint residue in my dryer. So to make sure that that's clean before I do any laundry, I'm gonna throw some wet towels that are just like shop towels in my dryer and it will clean it for me very easily. So for my first wreath, I wanna make try to make a smaller version of the one that I made last weekend with the natural coffee filters. I used some heavy duty wire cutters to cut down um, a dry cleaner hanger that we have. We get these for free, obviously, whenever my husband has to have his shirts dry cleaned. And then I add, straighten out the edge a little bit and then add some tape to the end. And what that does is basically keeps the coffee filter when I thread it on from falling off the other side because you've got to pack this pretty heavy in order to get your wreath full where it doesn't look like it. And basically, you just got to pack it on there as tight as you can possibly get. 
My second coffee filter wreath, I wanted it to be a little bit smaller and I wanted to have that heart shape. So I started off by folding it into quarters and then sticking it on the wire. And then my third one, I actually did the same thing except for I folded it in quarters and then I folded it again and then I folded it one more time. So basically, I believe I have this in eighths, this little pie shaped. And you'll see that there are two different color coffee filters. Those are actually dyed at the same time. They are just the difference in the natural coffee filter, the ones that are a little bit brown, and then the bleached white ones. So that's the same dye, but you get two different colors. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to draw some sort of very loose flower shapes. Each flower has the stem that kind of comes into the center. And then much like cutting paper dolls or snowflakes, you are just going to go ahead and start cutting them out. And we are gonna do this. We're gonna make a bunch of hydrangeas and every single hydrangea group needs two of each color. So four total coffee filters per hydrangea. Then you'll begin layering them sort of on a rotation and you're gonna go every other one. So I've got my light pink, my dark pink, my light pink, my dark pink. My dark pink being the natural ones that were staying to the same color as the other pink, but um, they're just a natural different color. So then I'm just gonna take them and I'm just sort of gonna twist, ball them up and then twist on the backside and then just sort of fluff them out. And here is what you get. You get a bunch of little fluffy pom-poms. So now I have these two different size wreath forms. One is larger and one is smaller. And I wanted a bit of a wider um, wreath base. That's why I am layering these and I'm just gonna use some zip ties to hold them together. When Chris and I were out shopping at Hobby Lobby, I found this beautiful yarn that I decided I wanted to use to wrap around my frame. Now, later that same day, we did find this in more of a natural color out at Goodwill. And I didn't pick it up because I, I'd already bought so much and I wasn't sure if I would use it. I really had already bought this pink and wanted it. But if you look around, you may be able to find this even a better deal. Much like the coffee filter wreath, you need to make sure this is really packed tight. This took almost my entire um, skein of yarn. You see, this is all that is left. And then I'm just gonna tie it off at the back and then I will actually use that last bit that I have as the hanger eventually. Um, I'll, I'll show you how I do that when I get to that point. So this was actually all that was left out of that and I am just gonna do a simple little hook here and make sure that this is gonna be hidden by everything else. But that's my wreath hanger, and that's what I'm gonna be able to hang it from in the future. And so I've got this burlap ribbon with a little bit of a, um, what is that, a, a, like, uh, a ruffle on the side. That's what it's called, it's called a ruffle. With a little bit of a ruffle on the side, and I am hot gluing that down. I love my Ryobi hot glue gun. Um, it does a really nice job when you are doing larger projects like this. I wish I could really have glued it in the time that it takes here. Now, the next part I'm gonna show you, I would have done a little differently. So I'm gonna let you see what how I did it, but then I'm gonna tell you how I would have done it. My ribbon was too fat because I wanted to make sure some of that chenille was still showing. So I decided to go ahead and sort of hot glue it down and there would be a little bit of a bump in the middle that I was gluing down, but that wouldn't be a big deal. But the deal problem is cover it that things. it's smaller in the center than it is on the outside. So really I should have just cut it down the middle before I glued it at first and glued the outside and then glued the inside. And that would have been the easy solution. Now I could have made coffee filter leaves, but I knew I have all this greenery in my stash. So I've decided I am just gonna go ahead and use the greenery that I have on hand. In last week's video, I showed you how I made this Be Mine little sign using my Glowforge. So I'll leave a link in the description. You can check that out if you want, but I had made two of them. So I made a long swag and now I'm using this for my wreath here. And you can see, I'm just hot gluing on some of the leaves and then I am hot gluing on some of my little uh, paper 
coffee filter hydrangeas. And I'm just gonna go ahead and fill up my wreath the way that I like it. Now I am just gonna whip together a little bow. The tool I had from a different project that is in my bedroom right now, and at some point in the future, I will show you that. And then I added a little hydrangea. I kind of debated about throwing the heart in there, but I, in the end, decided not to use it. And now I am just going to hot glue this in multiple places on to my wreath so that it stays on there nice and firm. And so here's a look at all three of my pink coffee filter wreaths from this week. Uh, I kind of like the bigger version of the fluffy one rather than the smaller version. The heart I truly love and I'm glad I finally figured that out um, and making it smaller was the key. And then finally, the Be Mine wreath I am totally in love with. I kind of want to keep this for my front door, but I do have all three of the wreaths for sale at VintageBeeDesign.com ready to ship. I really appreciate you joining me today, and I hope that you have a great weekend and upcoming week. I think I got a lot done, especially since I went and visited my friend as well. This is inevitably what happens when I go shopping with Chris, but I literally do not have a single Valentine's Day decoration in my house. So I guess I've resolved that situation.